This is your world So let's vow to make it a better place Let every heart that needs to know Your love is here to stay Ooh, It's time we live a new life Let us love shine bright in you We're saved by His grace So we embrace your love today We are changed 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6 through 7. We're going to talk about mentality, uh, maturity, excuse me, maturity through pressure. Maturity through pressure. Now, there's probably no one in here who would say to me, oh, but Brother Dollar, I really enjoy pressure. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's like, it, to me, it's like th there's just really no such thing as life without it. There's nobody on the planet that is void of pressure, which uh, causes me to think there has to be some type of uh, something that comes from it, you know? And a lot of you who are here, you don't mind me talking to you just for a moment so you can get where I'm going, but a lot of you who are here today, you are operating in anointings and gifts and callings that you know about right now. But the Spirit of God's been dealing with me for several months that there are anointings and gifts and callings in you right now that have yet to manifest. There's stuff in you that you can do that you don't even know you can do yet. There are surprises in you that are going to be revealed from you that you're going to start doing and you thought, I, I didn't even know I could do this. And yet, it's going to require something to bring it out. It's going to require something that will be responsible for pulling out those giftings and those callings and those things you have in you. I, I, I don't know how theologically correct it is that I'm about to say, but having gone through this for 41 years in my ministry and life, I wonder if we would one day come to the place of maybe just wondering if pressure might be a gift. Because we all have it, some kind of way, some kind of form, some kind of shape. You kind of go from one place of pressure to another place of pressure. And, and I realize in athletics, it, it's, it's a must. Not only in high school, but when I was fortunate to play college ball, one guy said, I've got to put you under an enormous amount of pressure so that the game won't be the time where you receive the most pressure. I've got to give it to you now. And sure enough, we all felt like we were well, well prepared to do things above our ability because of the pressure. There was mental pressure that was applied all the time. Physically, there was pressure applied all the time. And for me, I had to maintain a certain weight because I was doing some, some unbelievable thing. On every team, there's got to be, just in case something goes wrong and the first string gets hurt, second string gets hurt, third string gets hurt, somebody on the team got to be responsible for a fourth string. And my fourth string was center. 
And I'm thinking, I'm never going to play center in no college ball. That's not going to happen. But just in case three centers got hurt, I would have to be prepared to do it, which means I had to eat dinner with the centers, and they would make me eat more, and they would wait till I got full, and then you got to eat more. And I'm like, I don't want no more. Well, you got to eat more, I'm going to tell the coach, whatever. But you know what happened? Three centers got injured. <laughs> I remember calling my dad, and I was like, you ain't going to believe what happened today. And I got the call, and I played center for the whole game. I, I thought, well, at least I got my hands on the ball. <laughs> but there was preparation to bring out of you something else that you didn't know you could do. Wonder what's in you. Wonder what's been kept out of sight in you that maybe some pressure that you might want to run from is going to be responsible for bringing it out. And I am saying today we got to stop running from pressure because, listen, Satan wants to use pressure for your destruction, but God will allow pressure to give birth to some stuff that's on the inside of you. I realize in developing muscle, in bodybuilding, it required pressure to develop muscle tissue. And you can get up there and get a little lightweight, get a 20-pound, and put the dumbbell here and do this, and then bite and do that. You're just wasting your time. That's not going to happen. You're just wasting your time. There's pressure to eat the right thing, pressure to go to sleep the right way, and pressure applied to that physical body causes development. Growth is one thing. You can grow up, but to develop a bicep muscle requires pressure. Now think to yourself, maybe some other things that require pressure. Going into the armed services, it requires pressure. I mean, time you get off the bus, somebody is in your face. They on purpose make sure that you are up, make sure that you don't go to bed. They know you're tired. They know you're sleepy, but you got to perform under pressure, and it's there in and out every day. How many have been in the military before? Over and over and over and over, and, and then all of a sudden, it, it's just a norm. You come home on vacation, you're up at 4.30 wanting to go run somewhere. <laughs> Brings out into you something you didn't know you have. And then we got saved and born again as Christian people and thought, oh, we don't need any, any pressure. And yet life is full of them. Mental pressure. Pressure when people hurt you and pressure when people leave you and pressure when people betray you and pressure to get this job or pressure to maintain that job and pressure to change and pressure to change what you don't want to change and pressure to either yield to the flesh or, 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 and pressure or to, to, to choose to yield to the spirit. The pressure is going to produce some kind of fruit. That's what it's designed to do, produce some kind of fruit. Pressure. I knew before I could preach the gospel of grace, I used to ask why I can't even wake up and open my eyes without something going viral. Why, why am I always under scrutiny and pressure? And I used to think that preacher, people and preachers who are always going through, something must be going wrong in their life. Boy, I had a chance to rethink that. I, every time I see somebody, anybody just constantly going through, I'm like, ooh, what kind of anointing God working in them? I don't look at it anymore as something wrong. I'm looking at, ooh, my God, wonder what they are about to do. What is God getting them ready for? And so if you're under an enormous amount of pressure that's going on, God is getting you ready for something. Maybe there's something getting ready to come on the earth. Maybe there's something getting ready to happen in your life, on your job. I don't know what it is, but honey, I believe that if God allows pressure to work against you, he is trying to develop you and work something out of you, and the devil is upset because what the devil wants you to do is, is take, allow that pressure to keep you where you are and stand the flesh. The devil wants you to, under pressure, let's cut somebody out. Under the pressures, let's, let's do something devilish. Let's yield to the flesh. But you've decided 
I'm going to yield to the Spirit under pressure, and no matter what happens, I'm still believe God. I'm going to still believe God. I'm going to still believe God. I'm going to still believe God. Two years from now, all that believing God under pressure just makes it norm. Something happens, you're like, I believe God because he knew you needed to have that kind of stuff, that's, that, 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 that right stuff being pulled out of you. But we cannot neglect the calls, anointings, and gifts that God has on the inside of you that he wants to bring out of you, and you can't be afraid of the pressure of the devil. You can't be afraid of lack. You can't be afraid of, of any of those things. Because remember, it is he that's working in you. He's bringing something out. And when all of this world goes nuts and goes crazy, you will be equipped to stay in Jesus and be used by Jesus to do a magnificent work in these last days. Now, now that I got that out of me, let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> so I said, I thought that was for us. No, that was for me too. Let's look at this in the NLT. So be truly glad there's wonderful joy ahead. I said there's wonderful joy ahead. I don't know what most of you are going through, but there's wonderful joy ahead. And the joy of the Lord is your strength, right? There's wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. Did you see that? There's wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. So whatever God has ahead of you and for you requires for you to endure and endure means to outlast, outlast the trial, outlast the pressure, outlast the trouble. Trouble will come, but you will outlast it. Trials will come, you will outlast it for a little while. <laughs> and you know, when God says a little while, that could be three years, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but whatever the time is, you will endure many trials and the joy will come if you'll endure it. You have endurance, ladies and gentlemen. There's nothing that you're going through you cannot outlast. Yeah, but you don't know how bad it hurts, you'll outlast it. Yeah, but I just got a divorce, you'll outlast it. I just lost my job, you'll outlast it. Oh, I just been so hurt, you'll outlast it. I like where my, my mother said this to me. She said, you know, you'll get up one morning and it'll be a gone. I'm like, that, that's true, but you got to outlast it. Think about the enemies fighting you, and you will outlast it. That's frustrating to him, because he's like, you just won't die, will you? <laughs> you just won't crumble, will you? You just won't go back to that old crazy life, will you? You just keep on standing up saying, my God will supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. And then something else come. Oh, they're going to take your car. My God shall supply all my needs. And then they actually come take your car. My God <laughs> shall supply <laughs> all of my needs. <laughs> I can't have my riches in his riches and glory. Help me, Lord. Help me, Jesus. Then yeah. they turn your lights out. My God! What are you doing? You're outlasting it. You're outlasting it. You're outlasting it because the morning is coming. The morning is coming. All right, watch this, verse 7. These trials will show that your faith is not phony. Your faith is genuine. See, there's some people that just talk it, but they don't really believe it. The trial will let you know when somebody is just not real. We're going to see how much you stand. You, the trial will let you know. Some people, as soon as trouble hit them, you don't see them no more. They quit God, quit you, and quit the church. It'll test to see if your faith is genuine. I believe that your faith is genuine. Honey, you have come through it all. You came through a pandemic. 
You came through all kinds of weird shutdowns. You came through, and here, and, and here, why are you here? Here you are again. Here you are again. And the devil like, why are you here? See, he was just giving himself a big hand clap because being able to keep most people just stuck. And you're here. You just keep coming through. You, you, you came through just like that woman. If I perish, Esther, if I perish, let me perish. What was she talking about? She says, God gave me a word. I got to take it to the king, and, and he might kill me because most folks that ever did what I'm getting ready to do, he, he, he killed them. But if I perish, then let me perish. I'm going to see the king, and I'm going to do what God tells me to do. You keep showing up, and I'm telling you, if you keep showing up, God's getting ready to show out for those that keep showing up. See, if your faith is genuine, that it's being tested as fire, tests and purifies gold, though your faith is far more precious than mere gold, so when your faith remains strong through many trials. Did you see that? When your faith remains strong through many trials. Whew. I think the last three years, the things that have happened to me has to test the genuineness of my faith. The genuineness of my faith. Man, I had singles at one point it was the point where the boils appeared. And I put a big shirt on, got on the plane, and went and preached. My wife said, why? What are you doing? I said, uh, I'm going to preach. She said, and she just didn't say nothing. And I went, and the pain was excruciating. And I stood up, and I taught the word of the Lord, and I kept preaching. And as I finished, I said, take that, devil. Now, I don't want to paint some kind of fable to you. Shingles is the devil. <laughs> ain't no other way to say that. It, shingles ain't like the devil. It's the devil DNA incarnate in shingles. <laughs> I felt it was the time for me to know what Paul knew when there was a, 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 a it was actually the devil, but it was sent to buffet him. And he prayed three times, God, take this off. And God didn't move and, until he realized, in my weakness, that's when I'm strong. I had anointings come out of me with boils on me that I didn't even know was there. Glory be to God. In my weakness, then am I made, am I made strong. Easy to quote those scriptures and you will all have the time to see how genuine your faith is. Everyone, there's a separation from the sheep and the goat. You understand? Know there's a lot of goats that go to church, and all they do is bah, bah. <laughs> but the trials will test the genuineness of your faith. And he says, strong uh, strong, uh, is that strong? Through, through many trials, it will bring you much praise. If you do this, it will bring you much praise, much glory, much honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. See, my eyes are set on that day, which I feel is very close. I feel it's very close. I don't know what the rest of the world's thinking. Maybe they're thinking, well, this is not real. This is not true. Crowley and them just saying all that. This ain't going to happen. You know, there'll be three, there are three different stories told about Jesus. I mean, who really know him in the first place? And all that kind of stuff. Whatever. You may say what you want to say. But when all this stuff come down, I know I'm going to have to stand in front of a God. And I've already just played it. There's certain things I don't want to have when that day comes. And one of those things is regret. I don't want to stand up there regretting, oh, I wish I would have just stood a little longer. Oh, I wish I would have kept, I wish I would have have not run from pressure every time it showed up. And then God shows me what he was trying to do, but I kept running away from it. Those three Hebrew boys who were put in the fiery furnace, they had just made their mind up, whatever. You can put us and, and do whatever you want to do, but our God, talk about depending on God, but our God will deliver us from this too. My God's going to deliver me from this too. And whatever you're going through right now, your God 
is delivering you from this too. This stuff right now that you're facing, God's already working out a magnificent plan for you to have full of, you're going to be full of praise and glory and honor. Praise God because you refuse to let pressure dictate your next move. Mm-hmm. Turn to somebody and tell them, you're going to be all right. Turn to the other side and say, we're all in development. And those that remain in training, you will see the end of your faith. Amen? Now, I gave this to you before, but in another series, let me give you the definition of the trial of faith. What is the definition of the trial of faith? I'm going to tell you what it is by first of all telling you what it's not. The trial of faith is not a testing as to whether or not there is faith. So the trial is not trying to test whether or not you have faith or not. Nor is it a test to see if your faith is sufficient. So when God's taking you through things it's, or allowing things to happen to you, it's not to test whether you have faith, and neither is it to test whether or not your faith is sufficient. But rather, it is purifying. It's the purifying of faith. It's a removal of all impurities of dependence upon self. A purifying of faith. A removal of all of the impurities of dependence upon yourself. Here's the main issue. These pressures will be allowed to show up in your life to get you to the point where you are no longer depending on you, that you now will depend on Him. I had a chance to look at that, and every pressure cook situation I was in I remember trying to depend on me first, and that wasn't working well. And now once I woke up and I could see, wait a minute, the impurities of dependence on myself, oh, that's changing. Because now when stuff happens, I ain't even trying to dip into my intellect to see how I'm going to handle it. Now when stuff happens, the first thing I do, my first move, God, I need you. God, I need you. So are you still being impacted by the impurities of dependence on yourself? Because God knows wherever you go, you're going to have to be able to depend on him when you get there because you are a branch, he is the vine, and you got to stop thinking you're the vine. You are a branch. All we will ever be is branches. Well, you went through that trial, that pressure. You still depend on you. Well, I know such and such, such and such, I call, I do that. You went through that pressure. Oh, well, such and such, he'll let me borrow this. Then you went through that pressure. And you keep going through pressures with the impurity of self-dependence. But one day, there's going to be a trial that shows up in your life, and ain't nobody or nothing going to be able to help you except God. 